Hello, Christchurch. Hello, Christchurch. Good to have you with us. Steve, it's lovely to have you back. Are you rested? Oh, there's, yeah. I thought there was going to be more to that question. I am rested, yes. And yes, it is lovely, lovely for you to have me back. Um, <laughs> Steve, I'm not going to lie, it is lovely for yeah. you to be back. Um, no, good, good. 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 Well, we were praying for you and Andrea in your time off that you would come back refreshed. So that's, that's fantastic. Steve, yesterday we finished the Rebuild series and we yeah, finished... Yeah, you did an extra week. That we was finished nice it with an extra surprise. week. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we looked at a New Testament passage, 1 John 4, verse 7 through 17, which is what we're going to look at um, today. But I thought maybe just a quick summary of my talk would be helpful. The only thing is, I always wonder when people listen to my summaries, whether they would just think, why didn't you just say it like that yesterday? Yeah. Or on Sunday, whenever you're watching. I often think that, yeah. <laughs> so we finished Nehemiah. We've obviously looked at this amazing guy, Nehemiah, exactly what he has done over the course of time as he was rebuilding the wall. And we've been thinking about that and how we apply that to Southport and rebuilding Southport. So we, we recapped on a few practical things that we could do. But my main point of the sermon on Sunday was our heart behind why we do these things, our heart behind why we as a church at the heart of Southport, with a heart for Southport, feel that it is our calling to rebuild this town. So that's then when I just was drawn to this passage, thinking about our love for one another as Christians, but our love for the town, for the people in the town, the economy in the town, so that it could be rebuilt. And if that truly is the heart behind why we do all these practical things, then come on, Jesus will be known and this town will be rebuilt. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, as we're going to go through this passage now, you know, this uh, the passage from 1 John 4, uh, but it's important that you all, as you kind of watch this, keep in mind, well, how does this now apply to me living my life as a Christian here in, in Southport? And what does that work out like? That's the important thing to remember here. So should we go through it? Maybe almost verse by verse, a little bit expository. Let's do that. Yeah, why not? So verse seven, we we won't read out every verse, will we, Steve? No. But shall I read out verse seven just to get us to swing again? So verse seven says this, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who knows, so everyone who loves has been born of God, and knows God. Yeah. I mean, this, I mean, for me, let's just start with the second part of that. Uh, and we'll get into the first part in a moment. Uh, but everyone who loves has been born of God. And I think um, that starts to get to the essence of who we are as Christians, doesn't it? You know, that we've experienced the, the, the incredible, lavish love of God. And, uh, and it's because of that that we know God. And we need to kind of keep that as a, a constant kind of foundation of all that we talk about when it comes to, to God, our relationships with each other, our relationships with others. God is love, and we know that love. And, you know, the word know is experiential. It's not simply an academic love. It's not an academic acknowledgement of God's love. It is experiential. We have experienced the incredible love of God. Uh, and because of that, we know what he's like. We know what he's like. It's a great way to start a little passage, isn't it? Mm, it is. It is. And obviously, like, verse 8 goes on to literally say that most condensed version of the gospel, but God is love. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So, so and whoever does not love does not know God. Mm. You know, so it's imperative upon us to be a loving people to be expressing love in every way. And um, I mean, this passage, I mean, we were just talking about this a moment before we we came on, wasn't it? Uh, That this passage is actually about loving one another within the church. So when Paul, uh, so John says, you know, love one another, that's what he's really saying, you know, in church, love one another. But the big premise of the whole passage is that God is love, and so we should just love and sometimes Christians create this false dichotomy between how you 
love people in church and how you love people outside of the church. And, you know, some would say it's more important to love people in the church and others would say it's more important to love people outside the church because they need to know God. Uh, John, Paul, all the other writers, they don't create that dichotomy. They simply say love. And you are to love whoever's in front of you. You know, whether that's someone who is a Christian or isn't a Christian, you just love them. And, uh, you know, that, that's important for us to get hold of as we look at this passage, particularly in the context of the sermon and the sermon series. To, love, to know God's love means that we become loving to everyone, regardless of their spiritual state. Yeah. And, I mean, I said it yesterday in the, in the talk, greatest commandment is to love God and love our neighbour. And let's be honest, our neighbours aren't necessarily Christians. No. If they are, then great, love them. If they're not, great, love, love them. Yeah. And, you know, the, the neighbour is not that physical person who you live by anyway. It is the people that you are coming across. So we've got to weigh this passage up with, yes, this is talking about us loving each other within the church. And that is really key. Yeah. And that is something that I didn't particularly pick up on yesterday. I was meaning that we love our town you know yeah we love each other in church but we, we truly love our town in order for it to be rebuilt yeah but the whole arc of of jesus and scripture is saying don't just love people who are like us and who believe the same thing love everybody exactly and that's what exactly what happens then in verse nine isn't it yeah where you know john says and this is how god shows his love among us he sent jesus for the whole world, not just for, for those who are in the church or for those who are sinners. He sent Jesus for the whole world. Yeah. That's how he showed his love. And, you know, again, it's just bringing us back to the point that if we are to be truly followers of Jesus, it means that we become a loving people to whoever, you know, whether people in church or outside of church. And uh, then in verse 10, I love this, where he talks about what love is and he takes it away from starting with us. You know, we, we kind of get caught up with that, don't we, sometimes? That, you know, it's, love is for something that we do and it's, it's our responsibility. But love doesn't start with us, it starts with God. And when we've experienced the love of God, then we should be becoming more and more loving towards everyone else. The more we experience the lavish, indescribable, boundless love of God, the more we should become loving to everyone else. And for me, I think it is a, it's, a, it's one of those little tests you can do with yourself. You know, am I growing in Christ? Well, are you becoming more loving? Mm. If you're not, mm, something's going wrong. Mm. You might know more of the Bible. You might be working harder for Jesus. But if you're not growing in love, then actually, are you really growing? Are you simply just doing more? Mm. And, and that is the greatest act of love that, that we could ever have seen, ever as described in verse 10. And, you know, God is love. So therefore, if, if by definition, love is who God is, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, need to, we need to define what love is by looking at who God is. And, that, and, that's, and that's how then we love others. So our love is sacrificial. It is wholehearted. It is never ending. It is unceasing. And I mean, that, that's, a, that's a tall order on our part. Mm. But if truly God is love and examples his love by giving us this just mind-blowing sacrifice of his only son for us, and that says something about how we ought to yeah. love others. You know, if it's poured out on us like that, so we should also pour it out. I mean, just a, a verse back in. Do you remember John's Gospel, Steve, when we were doing our daily connects? It reminded yeah. me so much. Yeah, John 13, uh, this is verse 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, and this is Jesus speaking, as yeah. I have loved you. Now, he hasn't given his life yet um, up for us, 
but he knows he's going to, and he's demonstrated love in other ways anyway. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Mm. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And again, yeah, that is, that's going back to the fact that, you know, Jesus is talking to, to us as Christians, as to the church, and you love one another, because the church should become the epitome of a loving community. Mm. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. It's not bounded. It's drawing everyone else in. You know, that, that's how love works. A love that becomes exclusive to others isn't really, really love. You know, that, that becomes something else. That's a, a twisted form of love. But within the church, uh, our love for one another should be always open to others, drawing them in. Mm. It's never in some way some kind of bounded experience of love. And, I mean, just staying with verse 10 for a minute. Um, you know, we're, we're, John says, it's not that uh, we love God, but that he loved us. Uh, I think there's a danger there that sometimes we personalize that verse. You know, it's, it's that, that not that I love God, but that God loved me. But this is corporate. Mm. This is us as a whole. And um, there is a danger that we try and personalize this. It's that God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. And yes, he loves you. You know, it's a, this, it's a great line from preachers, you know, God, if you were the only one who loved God and, you know, he'd still send Jesus and all that kind of stuff. But it was because God loved the whole world that he sent Jesus. Not just us. It's not just simply individual and personal. It's the whole of us, the whole of the world. And verse 11, you know, it's like there's a question there for us, you know, uh, we also love, also love one another. If that's how God loves us, we also need to love in the same way. And, you know, we do need to keep asking ourselves, just how am I loving? Yeah. And, um, and as we apply to Southport and our role in Southport, am I really loving Southport as God does? Am I really loving those who work in Southport and serve in Southport as God does? You know, one of the things that I think this whole pandemic has taught us is, is our total reliance on each other. You know, we actually, you know, if you're isolated and locked down, you suddenly become a lesser, uh, a kind of lesser person. You need other people around you to be who you are, really are. Was, there's a program on on Sunday night uh, called um, uh, Extinction the Facts with David Attenborough. And looking at the whole world as a, this kind of biodiverse system. And because humanity is messing with some of the system, it's affecting everything else. Uh, and, you know, that, that's like we are all reliant on each other. And sometimes we forget that. You can see it every single day as you walk up and down Lord Street, you know, how some people treat shop staff or you know, some of the workers on the streets and all this kind of, they treat them terribly, but we need those people. And we have to love and value those people. And as Christians, we should be the absolute epitome of that, just loving people all the time, demonstrating God's love just by the way we treat those who are around us and in front of us. Was it, was it Francis of Assisi who said, uh, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary? Was that yeah. him? Yeah. And that's it. I think, I think that when in verse 11, where it says we ought to love one another, we've, we've got to put this passage in the context that they just heard chapter three being read. And if we look particularly at 16 through to 18 of chapter three in one John, it is talking literally about our actions <laughs> and how love is an action that we go and do. If any, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Mm. Love is not just like, Oh, I, I love you, you know, or can I, can I, you know, I'll, I'll be thinking of you or whatever. It is actually truly stepping out in that sacrificial way. And, actioning on 
yeah. what we are saying that we're doing and not simply just saying it, but actually doing it. Exactly. You know, and that takes us back to Nehemiah, doesn't it? You know, with the, the verse that you use from the message, yes. uh, where, you know, describes how they had a heart for the work of building the wall. Yeah. And of course they had a heart for the work because they were trying to firstly protect themselves, protect their family, protect their friends, and protect everyone else in their community who they were relying on for, for food or clothes or protection or whatever. You know, they, they, in that small community, understood their dependence upon each other. And so they needed to protect each other. So they, they had to work on the wall. And they had a heart for the wall because they had a heart for the people within the wall. And so the more you start to love others, the more you should be led into action. You know, that's, that's the key thing, isn't it? It is about moving love as a feeling into action. And I, th- I think in the Bible, I don't think ever really talks about love as a feeling. It talks about love as an action. Yeah. You know, God loved the world so much that he sent a love letter. No, well, you know, sometimes people say the Bible is a love letter. I don't see it that way. Uh, but, you know, he sent Jesus. He sent his son. And um, that was an action. And, and God is love. And if, and if he is the definition of what that is, if, if we get our basis of what love is because of looking at God, God is a God who takes action. God is yeah. a God who is faithful. He doesn't just sit by. He actually does stuff. Yeah, exactly. And we're the same, aren't we? What, what do you think about verse 12, Steve? Uh, I'll read it while you're looking. No one has ever seen God, but yeah. if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. Yeah. I mean, the first part of that is, you know, no one has ever seen God, but you can experience his love. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing is that, that, you know, people always want proof. You know, is there a God? You know, how, I've never seen him. Will I ever see him? Uh, well, you will see him one day, you know, and how that day looks for you depends on what you do in this world. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's God's love for us that is in some way the proof of his presence, the proof of his existence. And sometimes his love is shown to us by other people. And, you know, that's, that's the other thing that we need to hold on to. You know, we want some kind of a supernatural experience of love, which we can get. You know, I've experienced that loads of times, but I've also experienced God showing his love for me through the care and concern of other Christians. And the two of those things go hand in hand. It should never be an either or. It's always hand in hand. Uh, that God will sometimes choose to show his love for you through someone else. And, you know, that's the thing for us. As we start to show love for other people, we don't know the impact that has on someone else. Because they might be looking for an expression of God's love for them in some way. And along comes you doing a simple act of love. And for them, that's like the biggest thing in the world. Because it's for them proof that God loves them. And we need to hold on to that, you know, to, to know that sometimes our little acts of love can mean incredibly big things for other people. And I, I think it speaks about the responsibility that we have as yeah. disciples, not only as Jesus commanded it in the verses we just read before in John's gospel, but there is this sense that if somebody knows that we are a Christian and then, then we don't show love, we're therefore not showing God. And if God lives in us by the fact that when we say and trust in God and when we turn in repentance, God's spirit comes and lives mm. in us. He, he is in us. We have a responsibility to show the definition of love, i.e. God's. And that, and that sort of, it weighs on me a lot. And, and I, you, know, you reflect back and you think, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't like Jesus then. Therefore, I haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't shown the true love of Jesus in that situation. So we repent and we, and we endeavour with each thing that we do, each building block as we aim to rebuild Southport with every action that we do, do everything in love. But there is that responsibility. 
and that and that just it, it weigh it weighs on us as disciples but it's just part of that blessing of being a disciple is that responsibility should we move on to verse 13 to the end because that that those last few verses are all part of the same thing yeah um I mean, to me, they kind of, they speak to us about something about what it means to be uh, a child of God. Uh, and, you know, John here says, uh, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. In other words, what does it mean to be a child of God? Well, first of all, we have his spirit. But then secondly, we know his love. And it's like, first of all, you know that you're a child of God by living a supernatural life and secondly you'll know you're a child of god by experiencing his love and living out that love in your own life and those two things are, are together there you know and, um, and it's not just that we know that that god loves us but that we testify as well you know, that we are sharing that god loves you god loves you and i know it because he loves me and i'm a wretch you know uh it's, it's that kind of feel to this passage um and that we do that in the power of the spirit and that, you know that's that's when we start to talk about love in action sometimes it gets divorced from the power of the spirit and here i think for john that's that's the same this you know two sides the same coin it's living life in the power of the holy spirit and in the incredible love of God, both of them together. And if you get that right, that's a powerful thing, isn't it? You know, to see supernatural power of God and the incredible love of God in action. Wow, that, that's great, if we can get it right. I'm going to miss listening to you, Steve. Oh, I'm sure you will. You know, I was watching it, don't worry. <laughs> I know what you'll do. You'll watch our deep on on, the, on a Monday or Tuesday and then preach it on the following Sunday. <laughs> Don't tell everybody. Oh, yeah. see, uh, your, your wisdom is, is great. So thank you for that. Okay, so we have done wider in our conversation that we've had. And we're going to think about some questions that you as mission communities or you in your households can just be thinking about and just really praying through as you just try to work some of this stuff out in yourself. Steve, have you got a poignant question for us today? Well, I, it's not um, a question, but I think if you're in any kind of group or even if you're on your own and just to spend time ref uh, reflecting on this, just think about how you have experienced the love of God and to share that with someone else. So even if you're watching this on your own and are not in a missional community or not in a household where you can talk about this kind of thing, uh, find an opportunity this week to tell someone about how you experience the love of God. Because uh, that's what we're meant to do. We're meant to testify about it. So I would encourage you to either in your group, chat about it, or at some point this week, tell someone about how you've experienced the love of God. So that'd be my first kind of thought. Yeah. I mean, my, my question would be similar to one to that I asked yesterday, but truly if, if we are called as a people of Christ church, when we are in the heart of Southport and we are clearly saying we have a heart for Southport, like the people of Nehemiah had a heart for rebuilding the wall. Mm -hmm. you know, what is it that you are going to do to play your part to, to lay your brick doing it in love but what are you going to do to truly action on the fact that we are loved and therefore we are called to love others in that very mm. clear demonstratory way that's not a word but you know what i mean it is now <laughs> so that'd be my question yeah i think alongside that it's not so much the what are you going to do but who are you going to love? Yeah. And don't include, uh, I mean, yes, your family. That goes without saying, you should be loving them. Your friends, your neighbours, you should be loving them. But are there a group of people who God has laid on your heart that in some way you need to show his love to? It might be other people in your street that you don't really know yet. It might be a specific group of people. But is, is God laid on your heart something of his love 
for a specific group of people, uh, either in your street, your community, or this town. Come on. Should I pray for us, Steve? Yeah, why not? Father God, thank you so much for this passage that just speaks of who you are, that you, Lord, are love. Lord, would that just resonate in our hearts today and this week? Lord, would we know of your love today afresh in our lives? But Lord, also that truly we can action that, we can pour out the love that you have showered upon us onto others. So Lord, direct our paths, direct those conversations that we have so that we can truly show other people, demonstrate through action, your love for them. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and we will see you next time. Take care, everyone.